821 here, Big 550 KTRS. Dr. Jeffrey Lowell is our next guest up. He joins us via Skype. He is professor of surgery and pediatrics at Washington University. Good morning, Dr. Lowell. Good morning, McCraw. Good morning, Kelly. Let's first start with morning, this Doc. with this peanut uh, survey that uh, came out that um, instead of having your kids avoid peanuts, actually uh, expose them to peanuts, which will help, might solve the peanut allergy problem. What are your thoughts as you watch that? I think there's a lot of a lot of truth to this, uh, probably. Um, so uh, about two percent of American kids are allergic to peanuts. That's a huge number. That's you know every you know upwards of you know millions per year uh, have this uh, new allergy to peanuts, and some of them uh, it's a very serious allergy. And and uh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. Uh, and has. Uh, real uh, life consequences like you know some kids are so allergic that uh, uh, if anywhere you know, close to a peanut uh, they can develop symptoms right uh, so uh, uh, a study was recently done in London uh, where they looked at uh, kids ages uh, four months to 11 months old who were deemed to be at high risk for developing a peanut allergy and they were randomly assigned to either two groups one group uh, uh, had peanuts and uh, didn't uh, shy away from it and the other a group had no peanuts and uh, were totally denied anything that had uh, peanuts in it. And this study was continued for about five years. And those kids that had peanuts were substantially less likely to be allergic to peanuts when they turned five. And so this is this is new news. I think uh, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics, which is the one that issued the, the most recent guidelines, uh, has been neutral about whether exposure to peanuts early or not has been uh, advantageous or not but I think this new study is going to change a lot of minds what's interesting about this is they also say that to check with your physician because if they do a test and they find out that your kid is really allergic to peanuts you don't want your kid to be exposed to peanuts well I think that's a it's a fair thing and I don't know whether they're going to uh, advocate uh, doing any skin testing before, you know at age four months to see if to see at uh, you know, right at the very beginning, whether there's an allergy or not. So, right, I think but, more to more to follow on this. Right, but it seems like it, it seems like you're not necessarily born with the allergy. It seems like you more or less develop it because you're not exposed to it. Exactly. That's that's what it appears to be. Yeah. And um, you know, that's why the early exposure may either desensitize you or or prevent you from becoming allergic to it. Right. So so in a sense, can you say that the there are so many more peanut allergies today than there were years ago. Because growing up, when I was a kid, you never heard of a kid having a peanut allergy. It's because the parents are taking the extra precaution to avoid peanuts. Well, there's a correlation. I'm not sure there's a causal relationship. I think the uh, the study, you know, like is uh, hinting that there may be a causal relationship, but at least there's a, a correlation. Yeah. All right. Mm. Interesting. All right. Let's m move on. What's this other story you? You handed over to me about this UCLA superbug outbreak. What's that all about? Well, this is pretty, uh, potentially serious. So UCLA, an outstanding uh, medical center in Los Angeles, uh, uh, had a uh, very bad uh, event where um, uh, two people died and uh, maybe a dozen or other uh, were sickened by a uh, very resistant bacteria that uh, was passed from a endoscope. Uh, so an endoscope is a... Uh, flexible lighted uh, tube that's used uh, to do both uh, diagnostics and therapeutics and uh, the current cleaning uh, regimen for how you clean this uh, scope which is a little different than some scopes because within this uh, flexible tube is uh, several other channels that can be used to put instruments and uh, and uh, and things like that. So you have to not only clean the outside of the scope, but you have to clean the inside of the scope, and the inside of the scope has channels. Apparently the scope was inadequately uh, cleaned and uh, a uh, very resistant bacteria was passed from one person to several other people, including uh, two that died. So I guess... If it happens, so if it, if it happens at UCLA, the scary thing is it can happen anywhere. Well, it definitely, it definitely can. So I think there's lots of attention on uh, what are we using to uh, clean these uh, scopes with, especially, especially in people who have had uh, infections with uh, horribly resistant uh, bacteria where there isn't good antibiotics for it. So I mean, there's there's nothing, to, you know, for any of us to do other other than know that, um, you know, this is a real issue and and. Uh, 
we all need to find some uh, better solutions to not only cleaning these scopes, which are used thousands of times a day, but also trying to prevent these uh, superbugs from developing. Uh, super bugs and uh, peanut allergies, Dr. Jeffrey Lowell. And now they say, you know, don't use the hand sanitizer because the hand sanitizer, yes, it does clean your hands, but it also keeps you, um, you know, it, it keeps you from building up a resistance to some of these drugs. Are we, are we going about these things all wrong when it comes to sort of uh, diseases and viruses and things like, like that? Well, we may be. Um, uh, interesting study. Uh, of about 1,100 uh, kids from uh, Sweden that showed that uh, families that washed their dishes by hand were significantly less to develop things like eczema, allergies, hay fever, uh, things that are uh, associated with, um, with uh, immunity than uh, those that uh, use uh, dishwashers. So this is the uh, hygiene hypothesis that's still being uh, argued uh, amongst uh, many, which uh, says that um, uh, that uh, it's probably good to develop uh, a response to bacteria and other microorganisms because this can help your immune system uh, train and recognize the the uh, friend from foe. Yeah, uh, really, really interesting stuff. All right, Dr. Jeffrey Lowe, we'll leave it there. Professor of Surgery and Pediatrics at Washington University joining us via Skype. Doctor, good to have you back. Thanks for checking in. Take care, Regal. Bye, Kelly. Take care. It's 827 here, Big 550 K.